Many years ago, who could have imagined that one of the most exclusive real estate locations in the world would emerge off the coast of a West African country? What initially started in 2003 as a plan to partially stem the threat from coastal erosion on the shores of Victoria Island has evolved into one of the most ultra-modern prime real estate locations in Africa. On this episode of Channel Discovery, we look into the makings of a mega city emerging right out of the Atlantic Ocean. We talk to the visionaries, address the impact, the development, and the colossal environmental barriers faced by such a huge development. In addition, we look at the future of Africa in general. My name is James Laerte, and you're watching Channel's Discovery. Set within what we can call the downtown metropolis of Lagos is the operational hub, or let's just say the office, of the team behind the Echo Atlantic project. One can only wonder what the genuine foresight of those behind the Echo Atlantic City project truly is. I approached the managing director of South Energy X, the project developers, to discover how far the project had gotten and more importantly, how far we still need to go to bring the full dream to life. Wow, being here in the Echo Atlantic showroom makes me feel like I'm a part of history. And if these images are anything to go by, then this is quite literally one of the newest and ultra-modern cities in the world. This is definitely a remarkable undertaking. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Valentina. Hi Valentina, I'm James. Nice to meet you. I'm here to see the MD. Yes, he'll be with you shortly. Okay. Yes. Well, this is a pretty impressive showroom you have here. Yes, it is. Uh, what you can see here is um, real life pictures of uh, the sites of work ongoing. And then to the other side is artistic renditions of what the city would look like once it's completed. So are these just designs or are these literally plans for the future? Uh, a little bit of both. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the stuff that's already on ground okay. right now. So what are we looking at right here? Those are pictures taken far back as uh, 2011. Um, that was when the project was at 1.8 million square meters. But what we have achieved now is 5.18 million square meters. That so have been sand filled. That has been sand filled. Okay. So we're more than halfway through the project. All right. and. Uh, this is, is this the famous Great Wall of Lagos? Yes, that's a cross section of it. Okay, and uh, you've got the famous Volvo. Yes, um, that's um, the building of the seawall. Um, what is being used is two to five ton rocks, which are used to build it. Um, aside from the rocks, we also, we also use um, geotextile materials, as well as acropods. Now those acropods are also made on site. If you move further down, you can see see a picture of the acropods. So basically what the acropods do is to interlock this, the wall to avoid it from shifting. And they also help in diffusing the waves. Okay, so I've seen acropods and I've seen uh, bits and pieces of uh, uh, the sand filling, mm -hmm. the land reclamation. Has there actually been any development in terms of building any structures yet? Yes, yes. A couple of developers have started building. So for example, you can see the model on the plot yeah, map. Yeah, I was looking at that. Yeah, that's called Echo Pearl. Um, they've actually started on the first two towers. So the first tower, the estimated completion date or time for that is 2015. And then uh, for the second tower, it will be the following year. Um, another development is called Echo Energy Estate. 
Now, um, what they're building is real estate for the oil and gas industry. They've already started breaking ground, and um, their banner is over there. I'm sure Can you look at the banner. Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, this so, is quite impressive, I must say. Yes, it is. So that's their banner. They have started construction on their site. So it's sort of like real estate for the oil and gas industry. We call it a mini city within our city because it's a vast amount of land that is being developed. Every district is going to be mixed use. So there'll be both residential and commercial activities. But for example, you don't want the business district to become a ghost town when everybody clocks off. So you have to have a little bit of mix. Okay. Yeah. Looking at your logo here, I can see a lot of towering structures. Are they actually a true depiction of what's to come or are they just part of the logo design? Yes, it is um, how the city is being designed. So um, developers will be building mid to high rise developments at Eco Atlantic. Impressive. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the MD is waiting. So okay, if you want to sure. follow me. After you. As luck would have it, Mr. David Frame, MD of South Energy X, was actually on his way to the site when we met up. I decided to jump at the opportunity to take a ride with the perfect tour guide. What is the vision behind the Echo Atlantic City? Well, Echo Atlantic City, the, the original concept was to find a means to protect Victoria Island, which was under serious the shore of Victoria Island. Island. Yeah, I mean, Victoria Island in 2005 was threatened to the extent that the carriageway to our left actually collapsed into the sea. Well, the sea was on the edge here. The threat of coastal erosion. Yeah. So had the sea been allowed to break through entirely the, car the road, which is Mardo Bello Way, the whole of Victoria Island would be under threat. The solution was to build a wall along the original coastline of Bar Beach, Victoria Island, uh, before the erosion started. Now that coastline, believe it or not, is two and a half kilometers out from Amado Bello Way. That's how much land had been lost Over in, the in, years. A, in a period of about a hundred years. So what in particular is special about Eco Atlantic City? What makes it any different to any other commercial real estate property in Lagos or Sub-Saharan Africa? Well, I would say um, the most important thing is that we have the benefit of having a clean slate. Uh, we, we can design a city with all the benefits and knowledge of modern uh, layouts, modern systems, and designing a city that's fit for purpose. We're not remodeling an old city. That's so we're talking two, about water, years. we're talking about irrigation, we're talking about Everything. sewage, plumbing, all that. Everything you would want and expect in a modern city today, anywhere in the world. So what we're having here is a modern city to current international standard. There are a few different districts here in the plan. Could you tell Certainly. me about some yeah. of the districts and just... I'll run through this them. is my first time here, yeah. so... <laughs> Well, this is all new to me. I'll show you the layout of the city. If you don't mind, maybe we could uh, jump out and uh, have a look. By all means. Yeah? yeah absolutely. All right, let's yeah, do we'll it. We'll take this drawing and I can show you some of the features. Okay, sounds good. I'm excited and uh, I'm also optimistic that I'll be buying a plot or two here very soon. I mean, I know people on the inside, so. <laughs> Considering that the Echo Atlantic is being designed to accommodate 400,000 people with Lagos inhabiting over 20 million people, infrastructures being laid down would have to be future-proof against high dwell usage, especially when bearing to mind that Lagos is the only megacity that lacks proportionate leisure and recreational amenities at its epicenter. What is to come on these sites, I'm sure, is much welcomed. 
Okay, exactly. so you've mentioned uh, using local resources and products to make some of the stuff. You obviously, probably the bulk of your employees who are working on the site are Nigerian. Exactly. You're doing stuff in conjunction with the uh, Lagos State government uh, to do with waterway traffic to improve the lives of millions of Nigerians. What other economic benefits would you say Lagos State would get from the Echo Atlantic City? The concept of our financial district is in partnership with the uh, financial organizations within Lagos is to create a financial district which is reminiscent of Fifth Avenue in New York, hence the wide avenue, hence the high-rise buildings. If we can bring all the financial institutions together in one district, district area, well connected, uh, you, you're going to make the lifestyle of people in the banking industry far, far better. And in terms of the whole city, what are the estimations of the population? Not just the workers who come in and go, but actual residents who live on in the city. Well, the, the design of the city is premised on 250,000 permanent residents okay. and a further 150,000 who will be commuting on a daily basis for employment. But obviously, the way the city is designed and being developed, a lot of the people living, well, working rather, in the city, most likely will be living here too. And if you're in the financial sector today, and you're working in Victoria Island, and you're living on the mainland, your working day is extended by possibly up to two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening, just commuting. Being modest. <laughs> be, be honest. Uh, if you're living in Echo Atlantic, uh, not only are you enjoying a better lifestyle, but it's also a better lifestyle for your family too. So what are some of the challenges that you've faced in this sort of monumental development over the years? For, for us, the biggest challenge to be perfectly honest, is getting the message out to greater Nigeria. Uh, hence, I'm very happy when you guys come and you want to talk about the project because this is for us is an important issue. So what is the message then? The message is that we now have a city within Lagos, which is going to be the equal of any modern city around the world. An ultra-modern city ultra-modern city, wide avenues as you can see, well-serviced uh, blocks where you, you don't have to put your own generator, you don't have to have your own borehole and water treatment system, you don't have to use a, a very outdated technology in a septic tank to collect your sewage, because basically that's what it does, it doesn't really treat it very well. We are taking full advantage of the most advanced technology that's available to us. After this project, what's next for your company? Well, Echo Atlantic was set up to specifically construct Echo Atlantic. So South Energex is the company that is going to execute the work in Echo Atlantic project. And we are also looking at uh, some uh, activity in construction but our main focus is on developing the, well, reclaiming the land, building the seawall, and developing the infrastructure for the footprint of the city. That's our primary focus. Well, like I can see you've been working very hard, very impressive, David. Thank you very much for You're your time. You're most welcome. I, I enjoyed the it. trip and uh, look forward to you coming again soon. Definitely. I'll be here to pick up my plot of land uh, before you know it. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Take care, David. You're welcome. Cheers. Thanks. Take care. Seeing, they say, is believing. Well, I've seen, and I'm definitely believing. What we have behind me here is one of the first structures being erected in Echo Atlantic City, with many more to come, I'm sure. What started off as a dream has clearly now become a reality. The prospects of an anticipated Atlantic paradise are indeed mind-blowing. A magnificent skyline, world-class infrastructure, 
billions of dollars in foreign investment, but before and after then, what? I sought the audience of Mr. Okekunle at the Federal Institute of Marine Technology located within one kilometer outside the Atlantic City to see what they're thinking about it all. What are the environmental concerns associated with land reclamation? We look at the characteristics of land and its ramifications and then begin to see the role land plays in development. Land is principal in all ramifications. Now talking about land reclamation, there are maybe two approaches to land reclamation. You may consider land reclamation as a process of re-establishing or restoring Man a damaged nature. piece of land. No, 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 land reclamation. Another aspect of land reclamation is to consider it as a process of annexing a body of water or part thereof and converting it, modifying it, or altering it, changing it into usable dry land for development purposes. And these development purposes can vary. It could be for housing, it could be for agriculture, it could be for setting up commercial ventures, it could be for transportation, you know, social services in various areas. And land reclamation, let us make the point from the outset that it's very expensive. And you can hardly have land reclamation without some form of implications on the environment. You look at the environment where you are reclaiming land, you have the hydrosphere there as a water body that may be affected. Even the land itself, the lithosphere, sure. may also be affected. Yeah. Mm. The terrestrial part, the atmosphere is there, it could be affected. And then the biosphere, the aggregation of living systems from in the ecosystem may also be affected. And you need to consider the size of the reclamation or the characteristics of the reclaiming environment, whether it's water, whether it's wetland, whether it's dry land. Also, you need to look at the vulnerability or the sensitivity of the reclaiming area. And of course, you need to consider the type of technology or engineering that is applied. So you have various factors that can determine the environmental concerns that may accrue from land reclamation. For instance, if you are reclaiming land from the ocean, uh, you should be prepared for coastal erosion and flooding because know how the coastal morphology will be altered. And when you change the coastal morphology, it may have a way of affecting oceanographic characteristics, by which I mean wave action, tidal characteristics, ocean currents. So how can land be reclaimed and avoid such consequences, negative consequences? Perhaps the best thing is to avoid land reclamation altogether. <laughs> but seriously, you want to ask certain questions. Why land reclamation? I'm of the view that land reclamation should be a measure applicable to countries that need it. There must be absolute necessity. Okay, so land reclamation in countries, successfully by the way, in countries such as France, India, Singapore. Why not in Nigeria? I mean, some people are skeptical about land reclamation, but it does have its advantages, doesn't it? Yeah, to the extent that you really do need land for development. I'll give you an example. Take Holland. I can tell you that about 40% of the entire land mass of Holland is reclaimed land. And you know, everybody realizes how important Holland is in terms of dairy farming. The agriculture is based on reclaimed land, arable farming, horticulture. The Dutch have been able to develop their land reclamation capability to such an extent that one can only give them kudos. But when you want to copy from such exercises, you must be able to convince yourself that you actually need land. You have land scarcity as a major problem. One of the drawbacks of any land reclamation project is that it is extremely costly. Well, you're very informative, sir. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you.
seemingly, Nigeria has been identified as the next destination for real estate investors who are looking for the next growth story. How this all plays out from within, however, remains a bit hazy. To have an independent view, I visited one of the front runners of the prime real estate business in Lagos, Mr. Tommy Udama of Luxury Villas Group, to truly make out what all this hype might be generally made up of. How would you explain the mission behind the main Luxury Villas Group? I think before the mission, I have to talk about the vision. Okay. We're a one-stop global real estate company. And our mission is to give our clientele the most premium services in real estate they deserve. That's all. Could you talk a little bit about the Nigerian real estate market and what seems to have led to the recent boom in construction of highbrow estates? Uh, well, the world, they say, is a global village. And Nigerians are not uh, living in isolation. We go to countries like Manhattan in America and we see what is going on over there. And these people, when they travel, they come back. They just want to replicate the kind of things they see over there, back home here. And real estate, if you look at it holistically, is an investment of its own. So by and large, being an economy driven solely by oil and gas, People make money from those sectors and other sectors and they diverse their resources into real estate okay. to be able to secure their fund. I couldn't help but notice coming in the beautiful waterfront property where your office is uh, located at. It must have cost a fortune. Okay, perhaps maybe we could take a look? Why not? Great. It's a wonderful view. Yeah. Amazing. It is. <laughs> Lagos has some beautiful scenery. It sure does. Now, Echo Atlantic is one of the first luxury developments of its kind in Africa. How do you see that impacting the real estate market here in Nigeria and the economy overall? Yeah, to me, I would say it's positive. It's going to be a positive development because uh, every man or woman who has desire for luxury living or what we call lifestyle, will be happy to work on a development as good as Eco Atlantic. Okay, now speaking about lifestyle, how large is this niche market? Yeah, well, the niche market, not exactly as big as other developed nations of the world, but I think we are doing well. Nigeria, Lagos is one of the richest cities in the world, Lagos precisely. And the There's real estate market? Money. Yeah, There's the money real estate in that market, market well? in Nigeria especially Lagos and Abuja and Port Harcourt, I can tell you for sure, is about the most profitable anywhere in the world. Really? There are apartments more expensive here, like the one I'm going to take you to, more expensive than what you see in Manhattan. Okay, so we're about to go check out one of the luxury apartments that he runs, and uh, apparently it's more expensive than in Manhattan, so I'm excited. Let's go check it out. Some real estate practitioners suggest that with the creation of Echo Atlantic, uh, we'll see a drop in the price of neighboring highbrow areas like Ecoe and VI. How is this supposed to pan out if so? The kind of development you have, i.e. your finishing, the location matters. So no matter what, Echo Atlantic will not make the price drop. Because I give you a typical example, the advent of Banana Island, which it's the same ambitious estate done by the Chagoris. That's in Ikoi where yeah, we're going Yeah, it has not affected the prices in Ikoi drastically. The prices are still going up? Yeah, the prices are still going up. And there are traditional Nigerians who want to live in this location you've mentioned of. However, with time, it could, but I don't think it's going to be very significant. So this is one of your properties? This is one of the properties okay. and we're co-leasing it with our very good associate, Reback okay. Real Estate. It's one of the top real estate firms in this country too. All right. So uh, I see something here that looks like a security keypad. Yes. 
this is one of the properties that is well secured. Security is a very big feature among the amenities offered here. CCTV and access codes. If you don't have the right access code, you're not getting in. <laughs> there are a few properties like this you can see in any part of this country. Okay, and perhaps maybe we could have a look inside? Yeah, you can have a look inside. All right. Yes. So when you talk about expensive prices on the islands, luxury apartments, we're looking at amenities like security, underground parking, swimming, gyms, and of course 24-7 electricity which can be very challenging. Correct. Oh wow, this is nice. Yeah, this is compared to what you see in places like Dubai. So these are the kind of properties we only put our name. In your opinion, what's the future of real estate in Africa and how is your company positioning itself? The future of real estate in Africa, in my opinion, is positive and Luxury Villa, being a premium brand, has positioned itself for the challenges ahead. That is why we try to have the right structure and work with very dynamic professionals in our team. Is it possible to make luxury affordable though? Luxury is affordable but it's relative. Because what is affordable to you might not be affordable to someone else. Sure. So, overall, all things are possible. Right. So it is possible. Mr. Tommy Odama, thank you very much for your time, sir. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Having soaked in the enthusiasm shared by Tommy, I must say that it begins to feel like there are two Africas, the one the world wants to see and the one the world needs to see. Commendably, developments such as this in Lagos validate the rising of the continent by leaps and bounds. They have reclaimed 5 million square meters of land from the sea. They have built the beginnings of this amazing wall, an ingenious engineering feat. This is something I'm telling you, there will be countless numbers of people coming here to study. Ten square kilometers of rising ultra-modern development 400,000 residents and a daily tow of about 250,000 commuters, the Eco Atlantic megacity will be placed side by side other megacities in the world. This is a city worth every dream. I'm James Lyode, and until next episode on Channel Discovery, it's goodbye for now.